Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. My name is Byron Orwell, and I'll be your organizer for the session. And with me today is Kurt from Mark. I have a short video I'd like to play just before I name a couple of things. In support of working toward achieving a sustainability, Articulated offers a heat pump installation course to help educate plumbers about the types of heat pumps available, the economic benefits of heat pumps, give a basic overview of the SANS 1352 national standard and the chance to earn 5 CPD points. Support the course and register for this online course at www.iopsatraining.co.za today. Now at a 10% discount. Offer valid 8 to 21st May 2023. That's it from our side and I'd like to know the top of it. Good morning, everyone. I trust you all nice and warm on this uh, chilly morning, or it is down here in the Cape anyway. Um, thank you very much for taking time out to participate in this webinar. Um, this morning, we are going to chat about the point of use geyser, uh, commonly also known as under counter geyser or push through geyser. Um, I prefer to talk about the push through geyser, and by the end of this webinar, uh, you'll understand uh, the terminology push through geyser. I think the word geyser with this throws us off a bit. Um, because the minute we think about geyser, we think about a pressure vessel. And then we start thinking about vacuum breakers, drain cocks, uh, PCVs, and all of those things. And none of those things are required. So I'm going to take you through a, a step-by-step -step guide in what is required and how to install this geyser. Um, you know, on a weekly basis, we get a lot of screenshots of geyser installations, and they are very badly done. So a lot is not known about our undercounter or push-through geyser. And we get a lot of inquiries about this. So here we go. <clears throat> so although it's not a pressurized geyser, it still has to conform to a certain standard. So it certainly falls under the SANS 10254 standard, uh, which we all know is the installation, maintenance, replacement, and repair of fixed um, storage water heating systems. You're all familiar with the two that are commonly known to us. Um, we have on the left the Quick Hot Prisma Geyser and then the Ariston um, E-Tech one. On the front, you have the dial, and uh, that's your temperature settings and then you have the on off switch at the bottom and on the right hand side with the ariston you have the little red light over there so when the geyser is actually on functioning heating the water the red light is on as you can see by the measurements they are very compact and um very easy to install in a kitchen cupboard um, even if there's a little rack on the side now most importantly there are four requirements to a successful installation all you have to remember are four steps one you need an angle valve on the cold water supply two you need a one self-venting tap. Three, you need a non-return valve on the cold water inlet of the vessel. And I'm going to talk about a vessel rather than a geyser. So we don't, so we get our minds away from the pressurized unit. And then four, we have the, a drip tray which must be piped to the outside. 
what the most important aspect of this hot water vessel is that the point of view skeezer is not, and please remember, it is not a pressurized vessel. It is zero KPA rated. That is very important to understand. And if you look at this picture, this is everything you need to understand and know about the installation. It's very, very simple. On the right-hand side, you have the angle valve. You have the self-venting mixer. And you have the vessel. So on installation, you install the self-venting mixer onto the sink. And you put the vessel in underneath that. And under the cupboard, you have three pipes hanging there. That's what you will see. Remember that a self-venting mixer has three pipes, connecting pipes to it. Unlike the conventional mixer, where you have two pipes, a hot and a cold. Um, if you install the mixer and you have a hot, you have two pipes hanging, you have the incorrect mixer. So you must have three pipes hanging there. So how do we connect it? You take the cold water of the mixer and you connect that to the angle valve. So now we have an angle valve connected with one of the pipes from the mixer. Now we have two pipes left. If they are not indicated as to which is a hot or which is the other pipe, and you're confused about the two pipes, then it's very simple. Ensure if you have a type of mixer as seen on the diagram, ensure that both handles are closed. In other words, the washers are fully seated and they are closed. Or if it's a mixer, that it's in the down position. You take the two pipes and you blow into them. The one pipe will allow air to pass through and you'll be able to blow and empty your lungs through that pipe. The other one will block you. You will not be able to blow. The pipe that you cannot blow through must be connected to the cold water inlet of the vessel. But before you do that, I mentioned the non-return valve. You must connect a spring-loaded non-return valve onto the cold water inlet of the vessel. Then you take that pipe where the air does not pass through or if it has a hot water marking on it, or if you can clearly identify that that is the hot water supply of the mixer, you take that and you connect that onto the non-return valve. So now you're already halfway there. The remaining pipe will be the one that you can blow through, and that you connect to the hot water outlet of the vessel. And then you install a drip tray, which must be piped to the outside of the building. You cannot connect the drip tray outlet pipe to the waste pipe of the sink. It must, like in the normal SANS 10254 drip tray requirement, it must be piped to the outside where it can discharge in a visible place where it will not cause damage to property or be a nuisance. Right. So now we have the installation. If you look at the diagram, you can see the cold water inlet from the angle valve 
if you look at the cutaway of, of, of the um, diagram, you will see the cold water supply is now ready to be released by the handle. So the washer is seated, but then just to the top left of that going across is another um, tunnel where the cold water is also, still also alive and it is being prevented from flowing by the hand by the hot water handle where the washer is also seated so now you have installed your sink mixer and you have installed your vessel you've connected everything and now you want to fill the geyser or fill the vessel i'm going to show you and please look at the bottom picture. Um, I think it's uh, a bit more specific. So let's have a look there. You have your three pipes at the bottom of the mixer. You have your cold water inlet that is now ready to flow. And it cannot flow because the washer on the cold water is seated. And the same applies on the hot water. So everything is connected. Now for the first time, you want to fill the geyser. So you open the hot water. Remember, you want to fill the geyser. So you open the hot water. If you look, the cold water will come in. It turns to the left to the hot water. And you open that. The washer recedes. And the cold water now flows, but you can see it can't flow through the nozzle. It's being pushed down. And this is where I prefer to use the push through. The water is released and it is now pushing down towards the vessel. It is going into through the, the vessel, through the non return valve, and into the vessel. It is now filling up. Once the vessel is filled up and the water hot the water reaches the hot water outlet level and it keeps pushing, it'll push up through the, where the red arrow is. It'll push up through there and out of the nozzle. Now you know your uh, your vessel. Sorry, I keep referring to geyser, but your vessel is now full. Turn the hot water off. Switch on. Let me just go back to this. The little button on the left there, you switch it on. The light will glow. Or on the right-hand side, you switch on and you'll see the red light glowing. You know your, keys, your, your vessel's on. Set it to its highest so that it can heat up quickly. Remember, when you look at this, diagram and the cold water has pushed down through the non-return valve into the vessel and has pushed the water up through the spout right at the top where the spout makes a turn down the water level that is where the water level is sitting at so when the ge when the vessel heats up we know like in a normal geyser, when the water heats up, it expands in volume. That expansion pushes back through the PCV, through the PCV discharge pipe, and drips outside where the pipe is visible. This is what's going to happen here. The water in the vessel is going to heat up. It's going to push up through the spout and start dripping over and through. Please, the most important thing is once you have installed this, get the lady of the house and the domestic and explain to the people that when the geyser heats up, every time it goes through a heating cycle, the water is going to drip out of the nozzle. Very often, you will install this, you forget to tell the people, and they phone you and say, You've just installed this. You've left here half an hour ago and it's faulty. 
We can't switch the water off. It keeps dripping and I keep turning the handle and it keeps dripping. So please explain to the homeowner and anyone else that's going to use that, if it's in an office or wherever, that when water heats up, it expands in volume. It'll push through the spout and drip. Once it has gone through the heating cycle and stops, the expansion will stop and the dripping will stop. That is normal function. So now we know that we have filled the vessel, we've heated it up, and it has reached its temperature. You set it back to the temperature that you want, and the dripping stops. Now you want water to flow. You want to start using it. So what you do, you open the cold water, you release the washer from the seat and the water flows through the nozzle and now you have cold water. Now you want hot water. You open the hot water as usual. The cold water pushes through, pushes down into the, gear, into the vessel and pushes the hot water at the top. Remember, in a geyser, you have different stratification layers. The hottest water is at the top. The cold water comes in through the bottom it starts filling and it pushes. It pushes the hot water up through the spout. And as it gets to where the spout connects to the body of the mixer, that's where it starts mixing with the water. And that's where you start mixing your temperature. And then out of the spout, you have your free flow um, tempered temperature. If you just want hot water, you close your cold water and you open your hot water, the cold water flows, flows down in through the non-return valve into the vessel, pushes the hot water up and there you have it. That is as simple as it is. It's not difficult to understand. So moving on to the next picture, if we have a look here, that is what you have. You have an angle valve, Cold water of the mixer is attached to the angle valve. The hot water is connected to the vessel, which goes through a non-return valve. And the third remaining sp um, uh, pipe is connected to the hot water outlet. And that's it. It's as simple as that. You need the self-venting mixer. You need an angle valve, a non-return valve, and a drip tray. It's, it's really uh, as simple and as easy as that. Um, I often get asked <laughs> about the drip tray. Um, yeah, if I go to a pet shop and I get a little uh, uh, plastic cat box, no, you can't use that. Remember, a drip tray must comply to the SANS 184. And in SANS 184, uh, one, 1848, you will see that the drip tray has to comply to certain specifications. And one of those being that if the vessel leaks, and for instance, you have 96 degrees Celsius hot water, it has to handle that. A plastic cat um, box from a pet shop is not going to handle. 96 degrees Celsius water. So, no, you can't use that. Remember, a drip tray is also made to a SAN standard 1848. And unless it complies to that, whatever plastic you use, if it does not comply to SANS 1848, you cannot use it. So that is why it is essential then to go and have one made up, probably out of... Um, Governor still, and remember, if you're along the coast, to have it coated uh, for water uh, protection. This is a letter from Electrolux, and it specifically explains that it is a point-of-use elect electric heater, and it must be installed 
according to that. And you will see the picture. Um, if you look at the quick hot one, they have two handles and you will three, see your three nozzles. It is vitally important that you follow this. Now, when you see this and you open your purchase of your vessel, you will see that you have this fitting. You must not use this fitting. You must use a spring-loaded non-return valve. This fitting is for the European market only. And Ariston are more specific, where they say only for the European market. So this fitting is only for the European market. You do not fit this. It is a non-return valve, but it also has a little outlet. We don't have that. So that is why on the cold water inlet of the vessel, you have a spring-loaded non-return valve. And these letters are really there just to say that you must install it as a push-through or a point of use and that you have to use the specific type of mixer, which is a self-venting mixer. That nozzle, the self-venting mixer works in exactly the same way as your uh, PRV discharge pipe. That's where it drips out of. Um, and so where would you use these? Well, first of all, a standalone point, like in factories, canteens, offices, where you just need hot water for one specific instant. Isolated points with long dead legs. So if you have a house and there's a kitchen right on the other side and you want to avoid the dead leg, um, you install one of these. Or points that require hot water often. So I took a vessel and I cut it open. You can see the cold water inlet. So once you have your non-return valve attached to that, the water passes down through that all the way down to the bottom. You can see the fine little holes there, exactly like in the big sister geyser where you have your baffle or diffuser, whatever you call it, that has holes in so it doesn't disturb the stratification layers in the vessel. The water pushes down out of there, fills up the bottom and pushes the hot water out. So you can see exactly what it looks like. It's also lined with a blue glass lining. That is where you have your element. So you can see your elements in there, your thermostat. And gentlemen and ladies, the most important aspect of this whole installation is this here. One vessel, one tap. You cannot have a push-through geezer supplying two taps, three taps, four taps. It's one vessel, one tap. That's it. No other tap or any other hot water connection to terminal connection to that. It's one, one. That's it. So now that you know all of that, <clears throat> how to install this is how you don't install. So what I've explained now is if you're not installing it the way that it's just been explained and shown, then it is wrong. It is non-compliant. <coughs> Excuse me. So how not to install? Classic example, no drip tray. So what happens if that springs a leak? Um, that's going to require new cupboards. Here's a classic, classic example that you will see every single day. PCV, vacuum breakers, the uh, fitting that is supplied with it, 
What's not really evident, but you'll see it in the next picture, is that there are no compression fittings on the hot water. So when you have to service this, you can't loosen and re re um, take out the vessel. You have to cut the pipe. That is not ease of maintenance. There you have it. So on the hot water, how do you get this off? How do you remove the vessel if you need to replace it? You can't. The PCV discharge pipe that they put on runs into the existing waste. So at the end of the month, when they get a bill of 4,000 Rand extra on their water bill, and no one knows where the water's, why the water's high, because you can't see that the PCV is faulty. And you shouldn't have one there anyway. This is what it was connected to. Two terminal fittings, two mixes. You cannot have that. Remember, it's one vessel, one tap. So in this instance, they should have put two vessels connected, one and one. That is how you connect it. Again, some other pictures. All completely wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. And if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I can give you my phone number. It's 0827891076 in case you need to contact me to get any other clarification that you don't understand. Thank you very much for your time. I wish you all a great day and great plumbing. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Morning Clip. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you also for joining us. Um, just a quick reminder that there will be a recording on the LMS system. That recording will be available from one o'clock today. Uh, any last minute words you'd like to add, Clip, for end Um No, other than um, it's a really simple exercise. If you just, I just want to go back to. Uh, our slide here. Um, there we go. It's four requirements to successful. You need an angle valve, a self-venting tap, a non-return valve, and a drip tray. That's it. That's all you need. If you're buying anything else to connect to that, you're doing it wrong. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I see there are two questions. Can, can I quickly answer them? Yeah, so the first question is, says some customers want to use their own style of mixer, which forces me to install a relief valve. Even if the PRV is installed before the vessel, what is the effect on the warranty? I can't talk about the warranty, but I can tell you that that the way that, that you've got there is wrong. Um, you, you know, you, if you install it, you do say at your own risk, number one, and number two, uh, you can't issue a CFC. Remember, you must issue a CFC. So, um, so to the anonymous attendee, um, they can't force you. Um, there's only one compliant way to install it, and it's the way that you've just seen. So you're going to have to find a way around that. But um, I can tell you now that when you, where Ariston and uh, Quickot are definitely clamping down on their warranties, if they get to a site and there's anything that does not comply, they will not honor the warranty. So in the best interest for you is install it correctly and then you won't have that problem. And then I see the other one, why are those taps not readily available? Uh, and Okay, so those taps are available. Uh, there are, uh, I know of four different manufacturers who sell them. You just need to go to your plumbing supply store and um, inquire about it, but they are available. And uh, no, they don't cost as much uh, as a 150 uh, litre geezer. They are a lot less than that. Um, you do get expensive ones, but then uh, they are expensive for a reason.
I hope that um, answers your question, Emil. Thanks. That's the only two questions. All right. Thank you very much. Just in the nick of time. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning, Kurt. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, like Kurt said, if you have any questions or further queries that uh, come around, please do. Um, don't hesitate to contact him. He's more than willing to help everyone. All right. Uh, thank you very much and have a lovely week, everyone.